in your Bibles tonight, James chapter number 3, and we'll begin in verse number 13. James chapter number 3 and verse number 13. We'll just read that together tonight and begin our message. James chapter number 3, verse number 13. Look what the Bible says here. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Look what the Bible says in verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Tonight's message is titled this. It's a question. Who is a wise man? What's it take to be wise? Who is a wise man? Uh, I don't know about you, but I thought it'd be fun sometime to take an IQ test. I'm certain that after I finished it and got my results back, I would be sorely disappointed. But I would like to take one sometime, and I've not ever done that. Uh, I probably would not share the results. It'd probably be too embarrassing. Uh, but who is a wise man? And, and we want to think about that. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I a wise person? Am I wise? Am I godly wise? And we should yearn in our hearts to have godly wisdom and be wise people. Uh, would you like to take a smart test? Let's try it. You ready? Here we go. Everybody participate. All right, you ready? What color... Are my pants khaki? All right, you did good. How many of you said khaki? <laughs> Great job. What color is this speaker? Black. How many of you said black? If you said something else, don't even acknowledge it. What color is my coat? It's not black. It is blue. Right, navy blue. That's right. All right, now. What was the very first question I asked you on the count of three? One, two, three. <laughs> How many of you said what color is your pants? Sorry, guys, you failed the smart test. The first question I asked you, would you like to take a smart test, okay? <laughs> and uh, so you failed miserably. And uh, <laughs> that's just not fair, is it? And uh, I went, did my fourth grade teacher pass the test? Oh, <laughs> Uh, it's great. Uh, let's take this test. Who is a wise man? Are you a wise person? Well, the Bible gives us some instruction and gives us some insight into what uh, it really means to be wise in the eyes of God. And we should all earn our hearts to be full of wisdom. Wisdom is of utmost importance. Wisdom is the thing that helps us make the right decisions in regard to the issues of life and to make them according to the will and purpose of God. Wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, the Bible says here in verse 13, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Endued, the word is endued. You could also say the word endowed. It means has a lot of, is possessed with. Who's wise and who has uh, lots of knowledge among you? Who's the, who's the real smart people? Who's the wise one? Well, the Bible says, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. And the Bible says, look, if you're wise and dude with knowledge, you're going to have to prove it. And you can prove it. And the Bible says, you'll prove it a couple different ways. The Bible says, let him show it out of a good conversation. Now, the word conversation means literally your manner of life, your life. The Bible teaches us and makes it clear that your life and the way you live your life will prove whether or not you are wise or not. We watch folks often in our lives who, because of the way they live their lives, they're, uh, it's clear that they're not very wise. 
And we want to make sure that we're not one of those people. The Bible says if you're wise, your life will show it. Your life will prove it. You'll show it out of a good conversation. Good works will prove it. And that's a theme all through the book of James that when we have faith in Christ and Jesus dwells in our hearts and lives and we have the Holy Spirit, then the byproduct is naturally going to be good works. And your good works are going to prove whether or not you have wisdom. The Bible says your works and your life and your lifestyle will show whether or not you have wisdom. Also, not only will your life show whether or not you have wisdom or not, but your attitude will too. The Bible says in verse 13, uh, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Meekness of wisdom. Well, that word meekness is one that scares some people away. But I'll have you know that meekness is not weakness at all. One of the greatest illustrations of meekness and definitions of meekness is meekness is strength under control. Meekness. One of the greatest illustrations of meekness is a workhorse. Uh, I'm amazed by workhorses. I don't want any workhorses, but I'm still amazed by them. I'm amazed by the strength that they have and the, uh, the work that they can accomplish. Now, a meek workhorse is a good thing. It doesn't mean that it's weak. It means that it will submit to the authority in its life. A good meek workhorse does what it's told. And when a good meek workhorse does what it's told, guess what happens? It produces a lot of good, profitable work with its life. Now look, when you and I have a spirit, an attitude that is submissive to the Lord, we have a meek spirit that says, I'm going to do what I'm commanded to do. I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to obey the Lord. That is the kind of spirit and attitude that is both wise and productive in the Christian life. The question is, who is a wise man? The Bible begins, number one, by showing us who is a worldly wise person who actually is not wise at all. The first point I want to bring to you tonight is this, worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom. The Bible gives us an illustration of worldly wisdom, what it is and what it produces. Worldly wisdom. Look at what the Bible says in verse 14. Verse 14, the Bible says, If ye have bitter envying and strife, in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Worldly wisdom. What is it? The Bible says here that worldly wisdom is a heart that has bitter envying and strife. Verse 14, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, the Bible says you are not wise in a godly way. It's worldly wisdom that you possess. If you think somehow that bitter envying and strife is a means to an end or a way to get what you want, then you are terribly mistaken. You see, the Bible says that God's wisdom does not, is not comprised of, does not include bitter envying and strife. You see, worldly wisdom says that bitter envying and strife is natural. If someone does you wrong, you should be bitter and angry at them. If someone tries to uh, cut you off, you should cut them off in return. Uh, the worldly wise says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The worldly wise is looking for vengeance and revenge and self-satisfaction. Folks, I want you to remember that the wisdom of this world is foolish in the eyes of God. And if you want to be a wise man, it's not going to be someone that has a heart full of envying and strife. Let's just break it down. That word envying. It's so silly for us to... Uh, lust after other people's things, possessions, and lives. I mean, if you ever uh, was envious of someone's possession, and it may have taken you a while, but you finally got 
the possession that you always wanted, that someone else had, that you envied them for. But when you got the very thing that you envied someone else for, when you had it, you realized it really wasn't as important or as special as you thought it might be. You see, that's how everything that we are envious of in life, you become envious of that vehicle. When you get it, it won't be as uh, satisfying as you once imagined. You're envious of that home. Once you get it, it won't be as satisfying as you once imagined. You get that thing or that person or that experience, you'll find that the results of our envying is not satisfying at all. That's very foolish. And contrary to godly wisdom to be full of envy. How about strife? Envying and strife, they go together. They both are rooted in discontentment. Strife. You know, I think that some people get in the habit of strife. Have you ever been around, or maybe you are one of these people. You need to ask, we all, every last one of us need to ask the Lord, am I one of these people? Have you met somebody that they cannot possibly have a conversation unless they're saying something derogatory about someone else? I mean, there are people that they cannot even talk to somebody unless they're talking about somebody else. It's almost like if you try to have a positive conversation with these people, they, you run out of things to say because they have gotten in such a habit of running others down that they can't even have a conversation that is positive and uplifting and encouraging. They've forgotten how. A tongue that's full of strife is the byproduct of worldly wisdom. A heart that is devoid of godly wisdom. Oh, let's not be those kind of people. Strife, strife, strife. Drama, that's another word for strife. Hmm. If you've ever been around people very long, you run into drama. How many of you have dealt with any drama this week? Would you raise your hand? Yeah. If you have teenage girls, God bless you. Drama. Look, you know what? Drama is a habit. Strife is a habit. And may God help us to break the cycle to have it because it is a very foolish thing to live a life with a heart full of envy and strife. And the Bible says it's not godly wisdom, it's worldly wisdom. You see, worldly wisdom is a heart full of, wisdom, full of envy and strife. Verse 14, if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Look at that next phrase, glory not. The Bible says, if you have a heart full of envy and strife, glory not. Do you know that it has become a practice in our society among the worldly wise to glory in the people that you don't like? And to glory in the folks that you are glad to run down and trash. (laughs) I'll tell you, I gave them a piece of my mind. Well, don't be proud of it. Because you just proved that you are not very wise. Boy, I told them off. (laughs) This person at the red light the other day, hmm, they're on their cell phone. They waited through three lights. I told them what I thought about them. Don't glory in it. You're foolish. You see... The Bible says, and these are silly illustrations of something that can become much more important and more dangerous. You see, if we get to the place where we glory in the strife and the envies, when we glory in the bitterness and the anger, when we glory in how we got our way, and how we squished the bug, then the Bible says, you're not wise. You don't have godly wisdom, you have worldly wisdom. And you're not going to like what it produces. You see what it is, a heart of bitter envy, glorying in worldly wisdom, self-deceit in opposition to the truth. Look what it says as it continues in verse 14. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. 
The Bible says if you have this heart that's full of bitter envy and strife, then you are lying and you tell yourself that this is good, this is what I should be. I should be angry at them. I should be bitter towards them. I should be jealous of them. They shouldn't have what they have. I should have what they have. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you glory in this or you're guilty of this bitter, angry, strife and contentious spirit, The Bible says in your heart you lie against the truth. You see, worldly wisdom lies against the truth. It continues, verse number 15. The Bible says, This wisdom descendeth not from above. Now listen, this is important. Probably the most important part of this point. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Let me tell you, bitter envy and strife does not come from heaven. It doesn't come from God. It isn't holy. It isn't righteous. It isn't God glorifying. It isn't right. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is, you see these next three words? Earthly. Earthly. Let me just put this into real simple terms. Dirty. Dirty. It's base. It's dirty. It's earthly. It's archaic, simple, dirty. He said, This kind of wisdom is earth, earthly. Look at the next word, sensual. A lot of the times the word sensual is used to describe sexual sins and they are included in the category of sensual. But the word sensual literally means it's just all about emotion. How many of you ever had strong emotions about something, but your strong emotion soon proved to be wrong? How many of you had strong emotions about something, but your strong emotions soon proved to be wrong? Did you raise your hand? Yeah. Guess what? Emotions are very, very fickle. They're very fickle. And the Bible says worldly wisdom is rooted in sensuality. It's emotional. And I'll tell you, your emotions will lead you astray. (laughs) As a matter of fact... Your emotions won't only lead you astray. They'll lead you a thousand different places in the same day and drive you hog wild. How many of you ever had a day like that? Emotions. Now look, it's not just girly, childish. All of us, we have emotions. Let me tell you, if you allow your, mo- your emotions to rule you, you are not wise. What should rule us? Confidence in the Word of God? Lives that are principle for the glory of God? You see, the Bible says that worldly wisdom, what is it? It's sensual. It's emotional. And then finally, look what it says again here in verse 15. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Devilish. Folks, the devil loves people who are ruled by their emotions. The devil loves people who are ruled by something that is base and dirty. The devil loves worldly wisdom and he loves contention and strife and envy. He loves it. Because ultimately a person who is ruled by worldly wisdom is ruled by the devil himself. It's devilish. You see, worldly wisdom, what is it? It's pretty clear what it is. But I want you to see what it produces. Here's what the Bible says. Worldly wisdom produces this. Verse number 16. Here's what it produces. The Bible says in verse 16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion And every evil work. Confusion. Uh, This word confusion, it's it's not like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm at necessarily. But it's tumult, it's tumultuous, it's chaos. And the Bible says that worldly wisdom produces confusion, chaos, tumult, trouble. Disorder. I wonder, how about your home? Is your home full of chaos? Is your home full of 
tumultuousness, no order. It may be the byproduct of no wisdom. Is your life tumultuous, chaotic, no rest? There's a really good chance that it's the byproduct of no wisdom. You see, if you find in your life large amounts of worldly wisdom, you're not a wise man. The good news is we all need wisdom, and we can all get it. In that same book of the Bible, James 1, 5, the Bible says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberal and upbraideth not. Has the Holy Spirit pinpointed the fact that there's worldly wisdom prevalent in your heart and your home? If he has, repent of it. Turn to the Lord. You'll find him faithful. Oh, there's no room for this in the life of a Christian. May the Lord help us to be people full of wisdom. Worldly wisdom, number one. Number two, godly wisdom. Here's the contrast. Here's the other side of the coin. And here's the goal. The goal for point number one is don't be like that. The goal for point number two is be like this. Godly wisdom. Look what the Bible says now in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above. And now that's where I want to get it. From above. Where should we get our instruction? From the TV? No. From above. Where should we get our instruction? From the worldly wise? No. From above. The Bible says the wisdom that is from above is first pure. I love this thought. I love these two words. It's first pure. James is led by the Spirit of God. When he begins to talk about godly wisdom, wisdom that pleases the Lord, wisdom that's right, he says the very first thing that godly wisdom is is pure. First, pure. What's that mean? No scheming. No gimmicks. No lies. Pure. It's righteous. It's clean. Worldly wisdom doesn't operate in the shadows. Worldly wisdom doesn't cheat the system. Worldly, I'm sorry, godly wisdom does not operate in the shadows. Godly wisdom does not cheat the system. Godly wisdom does not scheme and plot and ploy. Godly wisdom is upfront, forthright, pure. Honest, pure, simple, pure, clean, pure, not defiled by sinfulness. First, pure. Look, the faith life is a life that's lived without scheming. We can just trust the Lord. We're going to do what's right. We're going to speak the truth. We're going to be honest. We're going to do things right. Pure. Godly wisdom is pure. If you have to lie or cheat or steal or bend the truth in order to survive, you are operating outside of godly wisdom. Because godly wisdom is first pure. It's first pure. Then it continues. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable. Pretty simple, isn't it? Peaceable. Now, worldly wisdom is rich with envy and strife. Whew. What is it that makes the television entertainment world thrive? They have the entire category of drama. Why? Because our base sinful desire is for drama, strife. But the Bible says wise people are peaceable. Oh, hallelujah. I love to be around somebody that yearns to keep the peace. Not yearns to keep the peace by being anything but pure. Now look, if you try to keep the peace and lie, you are not wise. You can keep the peace and be honest. Peaceable is a goal. And it's sweet and it's right. and It's, the Bible. it's something that is part of being a wise person. Is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, gentle. Now look, gentleness 
like meekness is not weakness. Gentleness. The most powerful things accomplish great tasks with little effort. The most powerful machines do great tasks smoothly. You see, we don't have to be the opposite of gentle in order to accomplish great things in our lives. When we have the power and blessing of God and we're trusting in God, gentleness can accomplish more than its counterpart any time. Wisdom, godly wisdom is peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. And that phrase, easy to be entreated, is compliant, easily uh, compliant, compliant. Somebody that says, hey, look, I'll do whatever I need to do. Especially in regards to God. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. That's wise, folks. Easy to be entreated. Full of mercy. I like that. Full of mercy. If you get in a situation... And you know that you can drop the hammer on somebody. Ugh. you got every right. But you don't necessarily have to. Don't. Show mercy. Full of mercy. The Bible says it's wise to be full of mercy. I, I like this verse in the Proverbs, and I'm just going to quote it the best I know how, but it's a principle I carry around with me. The Bible says that a wise man with discretion will pass over a matter. What's that mean? That means he doesn't have to get his pound of flesh out of every little situation that comes along. A wise man with discretion will pass over. He'll let that slide. I mean, you know, we'll, just, we'll just let that slide. Full of mercy. Full of mercy. Full of mercy. Full of good fruits. A wise person is full of good fruits. The scripture continues, without partiality. Means you're consistent without hypocrisy. I like that. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to be in private what I am in public. I yearn to be that man. Without hypocrisy. That's wise. Now the Bible, that's what godly wisdom is. Now the Bible tells us what godly wisdom produces. Look at the scripture says, verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Of them that make peace. It's kind of a tough verse, perhaps. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Now, here's what the Bible just says. A wise person, a godly wise person, you know what they do? They go around peacefully sowing the seeds that produce the fruits of righteousness. Godly wisdom, you know what it does? Everywhere it goes, it drops seeds that produces more godly wisdom. Godly wisdom, everywhere it goes, peacefully. It drops seeds that produces more godly wisdom. Oh, I like that. You see, when we're wise, you know what it does? It causes wisdom to spring up all around us. Oh, it's important. You see, the alternative is also true. Godly wisdom produces the fruits of righteousness. Worldly wisdom produces Confusion and every evil work. I don't know about you, but with God's help, I want to be a wise man. The questions I ask in the very beginning, who is a wise man? Who is a wise man? There's no doubt that all of us have some work to do. But we can praise the Lord for showing us the areas in which we have work to do. And we can yearn in our souls to be wise toward the Lord. And live a godly, wise life. Who is a wise man? Did you pass the smart test? You may not pass the smart test, but we have an opportunity to succeed in the wise test because God's made it clear that because we need it, we can ask for it and he'll provide it. Now we yearn to be wise.